that we need to understand it so you see that in a public blockchain any public can take part that is why the name itself is public organization type is completely public whereas in the private blockchain only single entity may be single person also by the by and it can be a single organization also you can go for a private blockchain in the case of consortium blockchain multiple blockchain multiple organization join together so this shows this is the difference with respect to the organization type is concerned this difference okay one minute so let's move on the common uh, what are the common features on all these things public private and as well as the consortium and the hybrid right all all chains of the blocks that is why i designed um, i actually you know thought thought of giving the founder foundation of the blocks they are all chains of the blocks they all follow p2p right peer to peer architecture they all use a public key cryptography or hash cryptography they are all immutable they are also auditable so these are all the fundamental uh, or common features that is being used across all these four types of the blockchain right now let's move on understand the further uh, nature of this blockchain regarding to the users so in the public blockchain of course is a pseudonymous right uh, that is what the word uh, professor used but uh, still we call it as a anonymous user in the public blockchain the users are considered to be anonymous right so who buys what may not be known it's uh, because everything is shown in a kind of a hash and other thing but software can understand it but the common people is very difficult to distinguish all those things that is why it is called as in the case of users the users are anonymous as far as the public blockchain is concerned in the case of a private blockchain the people the users are known and we are also trusting the users because it's a private right so when you are joining a public uh, schools right and uh, who runs it it's a government right maybe management will be there but whereas in the private we know everybody clearly and so it's a known and trusted of course it has each has its own advantages and disadvantages but uh, users are concerned they are known and trusted right and the next one is consortium blockchain also the users are known and they are trusted what about the hybrid blockchain hybrid blockchain is a combination of public and private their anonymity is there for a public network is concerned for whereas the private people that it is completely trusted known and trusted so it's a combination of both anonymous and trusted as far as the hybrid the four type is concerned right so let's move on to the next one access so access is open and transparent as far as the public blockchain is concerned right so accessibility is very transparent and as far as the private blockchain is concerned accessibility is fully restricted if you are permission then only you are allowed to add right even in the you know looking into the blockchain and the consortium blockchain is it is selectively open for few it is open for few the access is restricted so what about the hybrid blockchain hybrid blockchain is centralized control for providing the access hence privacy and confidentiality both are maintained in a hybrid again you know hybrid right hybrid is a combination of public and private so it has the both the properties now we'll move on network type network type is decentralized completely decentralized in the public blockchain as far as the private blockchain is control it is called as centralized so centralized leads to single point of failure again the meltdown right the bank fails everything fails right whereas in the public blockchain it is a decentralized so there is a zero point failure that is what the main thing about the public blockchain so when you go to the consortium blockchain it is partially decentralized and so we have the multiple point of failure in the consortium right consortium again is a combination right of multiple private so partially decentralized multiple point of failure so when you go with the hybrid the combination of the public and, and the private it is a zero point failure so it's a zero point failure as far as the public is concerned and uh, it is a single point of failure private blockchain is concerned and the consortium is partially decentralized and so multiple point of failure so this is also helpful for you to select right which is very important for you is accessible important for you or the network type is important for you right so the next thing is operation so operation is concerned right any one can read or initiate or receive the 
transaction that is what is called as a public so as far as the private is concerned operation is pre approved pre approved participants can read and uh, receive the transaction so the consortium means it's also pre approved participants can read and uh, initiate any transaction so you want to have that operation like this accordingly you need to select the type so when you talk about the hybrid right so the combination of the public and private any combination is possible this is the biggest advantages when it comes to the operation is concerned so right operations are always customizable in a hybrid environment because it's a combination of both public and private so central authority you want to do it you can have it or you want to decentralize it you can also decentralize it so the next property is verification who verify the transaction right as far as the public blockchain is concerned anyone can be a node and anyone take part as a miner anybody can verify the transaction but in the private blockchain is single people single node single validations right or there is a central authority to create the blocks or the managing the blockchain so in the consortium only privileged members can validate and create a block so in the hybrid public network is verified by the block so that is a, that is as far as the verification is concerned 